Alex Jones, round two. <laughs> it is great to be here. Uh, I had a really good time last week. But you were nice to reshoot this. I, uh, I, I, I passed out on air with you. So, but I, I, I hear you're going to air some of those outtakes later at the end of this interview. I didn't know what to do with it because so you were here last Saturday and shit happens. Shit happens. You got a little drunk. It's fine. You had a hard day that day and like, but I didn't want to put in footage that you didn't want. So like, yeah, what really happened is my, my four and a half year old daughter had been sick for like three days and up all night. And then, uh, yeah, I just, I did drink that whiskey you guys gave me. I'm not saying you roofied me, but I literally <laughs> was super relaxed in here. It was like 80 degrees. I just went to sleep. But I am here, super excited that these studios are amazing. The crew is incredible. These are the coolest podcasting studios I've seen. Thank you. Because I thought you roofied me. Really? Yeah, I was thinking, oh, wait, did he roofied me? So do they do that to both of us then? Maybe it was Yeah, a... I think they drugged us both. But maybe they gave me Adderall and gave you Rufy. I don't know. Because I, I was know. very awake. But... Normally the glass of whiskey won't do that to me. But I, I was like, by the end, I was like, well, you're going to see it coming up at the end of this, I guess. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to edit it in as much as I can to edit it in. I'm looking but, forward to it. Yeah. Plus, you've had a crazy fucking week, right? That's right. I had a lot of crazy stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't sure how much you want to talk about, how much you didn't. But you said before this that you're an open book. So... Let's just fucking talk. I'm about happy to talk about any questions you want, Blair. It's good to be here with you. All right. So it hit either yesterday or the day before, and it might not be true. Who knows? Media is fake all the time. Sure. But um, you know that you were filing for bankruptcy and that there was a lot of strife with you in the Sandy Hook case. And when I posted a picture with you the other day, that was like it was overwhelmingly positive. People love you, especially my followers. But there was that 10 percent that all they want me to talk about is Sandy Hook shit. Mm -hmm. So actually, it's good we're reshooting because we can just fucking talk about it. Well, absolutely. Look, I didn't lie about WMDs in Iraq and get people killed. Madeleine Albright a month ago died, Secretary of State, former Secretary of State, and she was on with Leslie Stahl on 60 Minutes, and she said, you triple the sanctions that had previously been on uh, the Iraqis, and it killed 500,000 children. Is that a good price to pay? She said, yeah, it's a good price to pay. So she's That's a insane. hero and wonderful and brags that she put on sanctions and killed 500,000 children. She's good because she's a liberal woman. With me, 10 years ago, I questioned Jesse Smollett. Uh, I uh, questioned Bubba Wallace. I questioned, uh, remember just a few months ago when Russia invaded Ukraine, uh, the Pentagon came out and said they are going to invade and they're going to stage a false flag car bombs on their border to do it. And they actually did it. But the, but the, our government lies so much, people didn't believe them because they cry wolf so much. And the State Department got confronted uh, by a, uh, I think it was AP or Reuters reporter saying, you're, this is Alex Jones territory. You're not allowed to say a government or group might stage something. So yeah, I did question that. It was a very small part in the whole timeline of my life that I've ever done. Uh, and I'm not the guy that first questioned it. I didn't send people to harass families. I didn't make my fortune or become successful off of it. It was less than one-tenth of one percent of what I covered. But then when Trump started winning in 2016, they decided, well, he's been on Alex's show and said nice things about Alex. Your reputation is amazing. I will not let you down, stuff like that. We can demonize Jones and then demonize Trump with Jones. So mm -hmm. they made me like the co-Trump or the brain of Trump, which I really wasn't. If, if, I mean, if I was, I would say that, but I wasn't the brain of Trump. barely knew Trump. And so a lot of criticism of Trump. And so the, it became like a religious hatred of me. And then I got sued a year after Trump got into office, and it's just been ongoing and so just they, they deplatformed me over it. Uh, they uh, did default judgments where we gave them all the all the discovery they wanted, everything. I mean, that's where they got all my financials, everything. They said, no, you didn't give us that, so you're defaulted, so you're guilty when it goes to trial, guilty until proven guilty, and a jury will decide in Connecticut and Texas, different lawsuits, same group, um, how guilty you are. And now I've been double defaulted with these trials coming up where I'm not even allowed to talk or have put on any evidence. I just sit there and I'm guilty. That's not American. That's never been done before in this country. Uh, and so that's what this is. So via demonizing Alex Jones, we're not just getting rid of the Second Amendment. We're now getting rid of the First Amendment. And it's extremely dangerous. And, and, and so that's all because of Trump derangement syndrome and what happened earlier uh, on. Well, I think that people want to make the Sandy Hook scenario the end all and be all of what you are because they see that, that they, they think that's Thing that's going to take you out forever and for me i feel like you're not the whole sum of what mistakes you have made and i don't think you can be on air for as long as you've been and talk about the amount of crazy shit you talked about and, and crazy topics that everyone's confused about and not be wrong sometimes 
Well, exactly. I mean, here's an example. Two years ago or whatever it was, we learned on Sunday that Jesse Smollett at 2.30 in the morning is out in 20 below, you know, zero in Chicago. And two men come up, put a noose over his head, pour bleach on him and say, this is MAGA country and right. inward. And I thought, I'm going to get sued if I come on here and this isn't fake. And I said, I don't care. It's my opinion. I'm allowed to have it. I think this is fake. And you were right about that. And one. I was right about that. So nine times out of 10, I've been right. Am I more careful now? Like when Trump was getting into office, somebody was attacking synagogues and, and attacking Jewish cemeteries. I hate yeah. anti-Semites. Terrible. I said, I bet that's a leftist group to demonize Trump. Turned out it was. So so my issue is, I usually think this might be staged. Gulf of Tonkas got into Vietnam. The attacks on our ships didn't happen. False flag. Uh, the WMDs in Iraq, they were lying knowingly. Didn't happen. False flag. So... Absolutely, but but to focus in and put Alex Jones versus dead children, it's just not fair. It's not who I am, and I'm not living off that event. I never even say its name. It's the people, the lawyers, and the, and the Democratic Party around it that have said, well, how do we stop a populist like Alex Jones? What do we do when he's so popular? Well, we just tie him to this and then just hammer that forever. I mean, yeah. it's 10 years later, and yeah. anything Alex Jones I've done, any big interview, it's anything, it's that. it's that. And so it's attached to me. I'm not attached to it. And my whole thing is, you know, and, and people are going to get mad at me for even taking this position, but like, did Alex Jones fucking kill anyone? Did Alex Jones fucking rape anyone? It was wrong. Yes, you were wrong about a scenario. Does that mean that you have to roll over and die and be gone forever? I don't think that's fucking true. Well, well that's the thing. And when I, before I got sued, because I barely talked about it, people were like, hey, please quit saying this didn't happen. People are harassing us. And I went, you know what? I think some of the anomalies were wrong. I was wrong. I think this happened. School shootings happen. They're terrible. And they were like, oh, my God, you admit you lied to get famous, so now we're going to sue you. And it was right. that it was that admission that I was wrong is when the whole avalanche of stuff began. So, again, I didn't lie about WMDs in Iraq. Uh, I'm not smuggling kids across the border like the Biden administration has been caught doing. Senate report you know, said that Obama knowingly was allowing it to happen. I'm not committing those real known crimes. Um, I didn't overthrow the Ukrainian government in 2014, which now led to the crisis we have today. And I'm against what Russia did, by the way. So, so, yeah, I'm not a war criminal. I haven't bombed any third world countries. I didn't do sanctions that killed half a million kids. I have questioned big, hyped up events. And, and the other thing is to be in America and to be constantly manipulated by the corporate press, it's to fall for every single thing. Jesse Smollett, you, you brought up. Kyle Rittenhouse, so many people were fooled by the media's representation of, representation of that story. Um, Nick Sandman, it's just constant lie after oh, lie. Oh, they said he lie. attacked them. He went and got in their face. Yeah, it wasn't true. Nick yeah. Sandman. Yeah, and then all of a sudden CNN has to pay out a bunch of fucking money. And it's like, I understand that you were wrong in this scenario. That, that's just simply wrong. You said something happened and it didn't happen. But where is the sort of anger and hatred towards all these other outlets that get things wrong and have blood on their hands? I think of back to 2020 when I was watching L.A. burn and you're watching the Democratic Party bail out protesters and rioters and people killing people. You think of all the wrong that is done and allowed by the corporate press. And I think that it's, you know, again, yes, you're wrong in the scenario, but you're a very, very, very convenient scapegoat. Well, sure. And, and, and look, you have the, the left is not the left today. They're not liberals. On average, they're authoritarians with a corporate agenda, and they do it for different reasons. They follow different reasons. But if they can divert off of all their known lies and all their known propaganda and all the things they've been caught staging or making up onto me, and one thing I questioned that I later said, okay, I think it happened, it's just a total diversion from the real world. Yeah. It's also, you know, the easiest way to erase someone from society, which they've tried to do to you. It's not working. You have a huge audience. You have a huge support base. And InfoWars is obviously something that it's insular in the sense that InfoWars fans are InfoWars fans. And maybe you have a harder time reaching larger audiences. I thought you said that earlier. It was like, you know, it's hard to branch out because you have that insular base. But at the same time, the easiest way to erase you is to smear you as some sort of immoral, evil person. But for me, I grew up watching you. I grew up watching InfoWars. Um, and at a very young age, I knew to take certain things for a grain of salt. I didn't see you as the Messiah. I didn't see you as God. I didn't see you as right all of the time. But I took a lot of what you said and, you know, I made my own opinions about it, which is what you're supposed to do. And I never saw you as partisan. Well, I was never trying to be partisan. And I'm flattered that you've been a listener and viewer for a long time. But, uh, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. They didn't know how to deal with a populist who was popular. And so they just made me the 
SH guy. And so for me, it's it's like Groundhog Day. I mean, that's just all I hear constantly, and it becomes a distraction. So they call you a racist. They call you a conspiracy theorist. Uh, they call you a Nazi. That doesn't work. So then they just find something in your life and focus on it to where instead of covering, and I'm glad we're able to respond to this. Thanks for the, for the, for the chance. But instead of being able to respond to all the huge things like animal human clones they admit are, are happening or uh, fentanyl causing thousands of deaths a day uh, or or impending you know energy collapse and food collapse we're talking about Alex Jones questioned something he's a terrible person he deserves to be silenced and once you agree to that you agree to everybody being silenced well let's let's get into a couple of specifics because um, the headlines this week were that Infowars filed for bankruptcy. I think that there's some dispute over that, if that's true or not. Mm. What What's the real story behind that and how much of it was BS this week? Absolutely. I mean, look, the, 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 the filings are there and speak for themselves. And again, the corporate media is trying to lie on purpose. They're not trying to find the truth. Um, the last straw, I was thinking about doing this years ago, filing limited chapter 11, which is a reorganization. And it means that when you've got creditors, and I've been defaulted in these cases without a jury trial, found guilty by judges, and they're claiming in the news and the lawyers on the other side that I have hundreds of millions of dollars. They made us give them all our books. They made us give them all this stuff and then claim we gave them nothing. And then they know what they're doing. They'll look at three years where I mainly fund my operation buying our own products and selling it. Uh, storable food, shortwave radios, body armor, uh, tactical gear, uh, supplements, books, films, water filtration, air filtration. Well, a lot of that stuff costs me 30, 40% the cost I sell it from. Okay. So they go, look, there's $60 million in three years going out. He has that in a secret bank account. Well, they know where that went to vendors. They just say that. Because it's plausible like they've made a mistake in the news. <clears throat> and It's not like it's bad that I make money. But they're like, he's got all this money and he made it off SH. He needs to give it to us so they can try to do that. So I said, wait a minute. That's why there's checks and balances. I will go to a federal court. I will file bankruptcy. I will say, okay, I've been found in, in, in default. I've been found guilty with no trial. That's fine. You're supposed to pay no more than basically half of what you've got, and I don't. And I'm, and I'm not trying to be Daddy Warbucks. I don't have that much money. Got a nice house, a car, and, a few, and you know a few a few million bucks. And so I'm I'm like, stop saying I got a hundred million dollars or sixty million dollars. Right. Stop saying I'm a fraud. Federal magistrate, federal judge, federal. Uh, what's the term they use? Trustees. You, you, you come in here and see this, so they stop lying in the press to do this, and so that's why I did it. And so I can sit there and say, here I am to a federal court. That's what bankruptcy is for. So I'm not in two Sandy Hook trials in Texas this summer and one in the fall. And it's all about HBO and Netflix and huge, like $20, 30000000 million budgets for HBO. Uh, the guy that did uh, Leaving Neverland. And you go to the court hearings, and the judges are combing their hair, putting makeup on. Wait, wait, hold the on. the other lawyers are micing themselves up. You're going a little fat. The, what's the tie-in with Netflix and Leaving Neverland? Netflix, CNN, HBO, they're all making documentaries. About your situation. So right when now. I go to these court hearings, there's literally the other side miking up, putting their makeup oh, on. Shit. The judge is putting it on. Oh, my God. And then God. they go, you devil! And I'm just sitting there going, and it's all them trying to be famous, them making money off of this while saying I'm doing it. And I'm like, whoa, I'm going to the federal court. Um, you guys are full of it. This is insane. So you have just like a litany of documentaries and specials and movies being like made right now about your current situation and you just know about that there are there are at least seven alex jones documentaries that are negative being run right now and it's all about sandy hook so they oh, see man. it if they can if they can demonize alex jones as a populist they can demonize anybody and so yeah they'll, i mean that, that's three i'm not even scared of those shows people see through it but i've got to hear how i'm getting rich and famous off this sh I'm having to hear how my whole career is based on it, but it's not even a blip on the radar. And I'm sitting there, you know, hearing this. I mean, going on one Joe Rogan podcast is a thousand times bigger than my coverage of SH. Um, sneaking into Bohemian Grove was a thousand times bigger. Interviewing Trump and, and, you know, stuff was a thousand times bigger. Being at January 6th trying to stop it, a thousand times bigger. Having Tucker Carlson talk about it is a hundred times bigger. And it's just not true 
that this thing is who I am or I got rich off of it. And then now we literally go and the judges like this, they're like, we're micing you up and like, oh, it's my, and they're both of them. Like they, oh, both God. Be, they get me you know, and they, oh, oh. And they, cause they're just in another world. They think HBO is important. They think Netflix is important. They don't know that podcasts and shows like this are already bigger than that. That's why it's all falling apart. And so I don't want to participate, especially when they're saying he's getting rich He's getting famous. He lives off this. And I'm just like, please let me off this ride. I question everything. I even admitted in a deposition a couple of years ago, I've been deposed four times, that I used to think everything was staged 10 years ago because so much of it was. And it was like a form of psychosis, kind of like a form. And I went on to say, you know, the public doesn't believe anything anymore because they've been lied to so much. And they go, Jones admits he's diagnosed with psychosis. No, I said, kind of like a form, because I'll admit when I've been wrong. These people don't do that, and so that's why they don't have big audiences. I am authentic and real, people know it. Mistakes and all. The difference is I'm not trying to lie to people on purpose. So I, I don't wanna go off on a whole rant about that, but I've done limited bankruptcy. It's all there in the filings. Uh, and and I'm sure that what's the I, difference between bankruptcy and limited bankruptcy? Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but they've got a, they've got involuntary bankruptcy where they can force you into it. They've got uh, voluntary bankruptcy okay. uh, where you yourself you know can't pay your debts, and you've got the different types of corporate bankruptcy. And so what we've done is not really what they call the divisive merger, but it's similar, where you've got a company that's ongoing, like Johnson Johnson with baby powder or whatever. You say okay. We're going to create a new company and put it into there and agree to pay out of the company for the claims. And so you segment that off. And so, so what we're saying is, okay, you found me guilty without being, you know, tried. Fine. But you can only make people pay what they've got. I don't even care about the money I have. It's not much compared to things. I'm not even trying to make money. So you can have what I got. And they're like, no, we know you've got hundreds of millions. I tried to go settle with them. And they go, we know you have hundreds of millions. And I'm like, I, I do not. They go, you're a fraud in the court. We had, I hired like a big Democrat CPA th two years ago thinking, I'll hire a Democrat known CPA that's highly respected. Bring the CPA in. They say in Connecticut, this is a fraud. You've got all this hidden money. And we're like, we'll call the police on me. Then I, then I perjured myself. I didn't. Stop it. And, and so now I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. You people are nuts. And so I'm bringing federal court in to literally you know, look down our throat, look up our rear end, whatever, so you guys will shut up and stop it because they don't want to know the truth. And that, that's what's frustrating about it. Well, how does it feel? One of the things you said was really striking that the judge, and I don't want you to say anything that's going to be bad for you to say, but one of the things you said was that the judge was like seemingly interested she in being on camera. She needs more water, guys. <laughs> I'm being good. Yeah, Start water. Uh, the judge, the judge, like you, you, you kind of insinuated that the judge was enamored with being on camera and being part of the documentary and stuff. How does that feel? I mean, that's got to be. Oh, scary. there's no doubt. I mean, l listen, listen. The judge in Connecticut literally said in a ruling, "We filed fraudulent financial documents. The damn things are 100 percent real. Like, you think I'm going to go to jail for perjury? I mean, I'm a, I mean, this is ridiculous. And, and we're like a respected Democrat CPA that does the CPA work for like major Democratic Party organizations." You're saying he's a fraud because they were already saying it was a fraud. So I said, well, I'll hire a big Democrat. Is and, water, and, 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 and that wasn't enough. Okay. And, and and that's what I'm saying about this is it's insane. It's insane. I mean, I've been, I'm completely transparent. I don't have any stocks or bonds. I've got a house, a car, and to run my company, you really need like four or five million dollars. The company as big as mine and all my crew to be able to buy a product in the future. We don't even have that much. We don't have three million. And, and, and so InfoWars is in trouble. Because I haven't laid people off, I haven't cut their pay, and uh, and I and I and I've and I've and I've I mean I'm down to like I'm going to sell the famous armored vehicle we've got. Uh, I I've I've got my uh, truck, so I'm going to sell my Hellcat that I love, but I, I don't need to be speed anyways. And it's just going to be funny when they finally get their big giant adjustments and there's no money there. Right. I mean, it's just it's hilarious actually. So I mean, this is more of a, a personal question having to do kind of just with your mental health in your soul but like i'm hearing all this shit and i can't imagine it i've been very blessed in my life to never have dealt with legal problems at all knock on whatever the fuck that is um how are you dealing with it mentally and just as a person because I, I could only imagine you are you in a dark place about it are you hopeful are you you know i'm in a i'm, I'm worried about the war and the devaluation of the currencies and the inflation 
and everything that's happening. Um, I'm not really worried about myself at the end of the day. I mean, my dad almost died of COVID last year. Um, I've lost family members. You know, I've, I've had bad family things happen that, that, that are so painful that it's kind of like the old thing. You, know, you hit your finger with a hammer. Well, let's, you know how to fix the pain, cut your arm off. You know, I mean, it makes so the pain is so much greater with personal things in my life that, that, that people lying about me in the media and, and, and trying to bankrupt me doesn't really do anything, except I realize we have an important mission for free speech and what we're doing on air. And so I'm almost feel guilty that it isn't a big enough pain or I, I don't feel sorry for myself. Uh, so no, I mean, I mean, I do worry about the country. I uh, really do worry about the weaponization of the judiciary and the spying and the censorship. And, you know, they're trying to put me in jail for January 6th. It's all over the news. They've got criminal investigations going there. And and I, I was there to have a peaceful rally with Trump. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Is the January and, and, and then I'm on record trying to stop people going to the building. And I got thousands to not go in. And they go, we don't care. We're still investigating you as a terrorist. But if I'd have been out burning buildings down in Kenosha or in Portland, I'd be mostly peaceful. You know, I'd be bailed out by the vice president. Well, I, I was just going to say um, that I, I went and watched a documentary when she was screening with Michael Malice. We went and saw that. And like, I, I knew that you were under fire for the Gen 6 shit. And I knew that you were having legal problems over it. But I never saw the direct footage of you literally telling the crowd, do not enact violence, do not hurt anyone, do not get too crazy. Like, it seemed as if you were almost, maybe I'm wrong, I was not there that day. Thank God I wasn't there that day. But you seem to be almost the sole force that was trying to de-escalate things. Oh, yeah. They even had the Wall Street Journal say Jones was there commanding people to go in. We sent them the video they had to retract. But, again, you got a million people there in D.C., 50,000 inside the ellipse. And then no one could control that crowd. They had the National Guard not there. They had the police basically stand down. I show up hours into people breaking into the Capitol. It's a small minority getting in. Most people don't know and are just going in, but we're getting the messages in the news. That there's a melee inside. I go, hey, this could be Kent State. Don't go in. Don't go in. Come around where we had a permit you know, to speak on the other side and a stage. And but But then I watch PBS documentaries and CNN documentaries, and they're like, Jones was there leading the attack. And it's that it, 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 it's that frontline guy's announcer. There he was, Jones, leading the attack on the Capitol. Frontline tonight, American conspiracy. And you're like going, this is PBS that knows that's not true, but they're running this because they're so weaponized against the American people, and they believe they're right, and they believe that they're going to dominate us for our own good. Do you ever consider, I mean— I'm, I'm going to assume the answer before I even ask, but do you ever consider, like, if, if, you were, if you're watching PBS and you're watching these fucking people say Jones is leading the attack or the charge or whatever, do you ever consider firing back at them and, and suing them? You know... Because it seems as if that's completely opposite <laughs> of the truth. Well, here's how the courts work. The New York Times said that Sarah Palin put crosshairs on a congresswoman's head and said, kill her. I remember that, yeah. She didn't. It was a lie. But they found, hey, the press is so important, they're allowed to say that. And I actually agree with that. She's a public figure. And even though we know the New York Times lied, that's their right to do it, really. Well, that's New York Times versus Sullivan. They get to tell lies about WMDs on purpose. I make mistakes and I get shut down. So I don't have the time or the money or the energy to sue all these people. Yeah. And to and to do that, um, they, had a, they had an article like two years ago in the Wall Street Journal, again, and, and AP ran it saying Alex Jones found guilty for writing Nobody Died at SH. Well, I never wrote a book, Nobody Died at SH. And I called AP and they just said, screw you, sue us. But they'd already created that thing of I'm guilty, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. So it, it's this total weaponization of the media. That's I mean, I mean, that's really all it is. Here's the thing that I get, maybe conflicted is a strong word, but I'm noticing this thing with you where... I've met so many people who have, you know, a public persona, media profiles, and they have a very good image. They're very much protected by the regime. They're very much protected by the corporate press, and they can do no wrong in the eyes of the mainstream media, right? And then you meet them in real life, and you're like, oh, that's a demon. That's maybe not literally. I don't believe in literal demons, but that's a bad person. And their image doesn't match with, like, their good public persona. And for you, it's flipped. You have this, like persona that's put on you, not by you, but other people, that you are a bad person. And when I posted my picture, people were saying, he doesn't even see you as human. Why are you hanging out with him? Which is like, how are you going to tell me how he feels about me when I've been around him in real life? But anyways, you 
the thing that I struggle with is like I've met so many people that are bad people in real life, good people in public. You're supposedly a bad person in public. I don't believe that either, but people say that. And you're a very nice person in real life. So it's crazy being able to just like interact with you in person and you're kind of just like a fucking teddy bear in real life. So does it get frustrating also that the legal stuff aside, that you are demonized as a person who wants to inflict harm? Because that's the thing. They think that you, with the SH thing, that you wanted to inflict harm, that you wanted to hurt these families. That's what they say. Yeah, and if you go to the record, I've never said the names of any of the people but one of them. And under Texas law, you're not supposed to be able to sue somebody if you haven't said their name, but they still do it. And I just forgive them. They're under a lot of pain, and, and they want to have value in their life and meaning. So they've just kind of projected onto me a lot of hatred. And I'm not perfect. I made mistakes. But but I didn't really question that out of a place of harm. And they can take things out of context where I'm yelling and screaming, and which is like 2% of the time what I'm doing, and, and say, this guy looks kind of nuts. And sometimes I, I see stuff, and I'm like, that guy does look nuts. He does look crazy. Like, a couple of years ago, I did the famous I'll Eat My Neighbors deal. And I what said— well, I explained it as the modest proposal uh, by Swift like 300 years ago. The Irish were all starving to death, and the English didn't want to give them aid. And so he wrote an essay called A Modest Proposal in the newspaper, and the, the big London newspaper saying, well, the, the Irish shouldn't complain. They should breed their babies, fatten them up, and sell them to be eaten. So I said this is a uh, Jonathan Swift allegory. But I said, if society collapses, if the supply chain breaks down, you won't just have inflation, you'll have starvation. Within 10 days, most people become homicidal killers. Within 15 days, people commit suicide or they become cannibals. So I said, I'm, and so I said, hypothetically, as an allegory, I'm looking at my neighbors, figuring out how to haul them up by a chain and chop them up and eat them. Now, I said the same 10 and a half minute segment. This is satire. This is off of this famous essay. But I said it with so much conviction, I knew when I did it, they would edit out what I said and would put it out, and it was really powerful. It was like Jack Nicholson, you can't handle the truth. It was really intense. And if I have a dark side, that's it. Because I did the proviso knowing they'd be deceptive and edited, and it would be this thing with 20 million views, and, and it was. Uh, and, 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 and so if anything, I know how they deceive and I manipulate them and let them do it, but I have the little proviso that, hey, this isn't serious but then I know they're going to do that. So it's kind of a dirty thing I do. It's, it's one of the bad things I do. And I just kind of get the idea and I just do it. And, 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 and it's, 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 it's a guilty pleasure, but they're the ones lying. Cause I say, this isn't serious. This is satire. And then they edit that off and put the part out. So you're fully aware that when you say some of the more intense things you say, that it's going to be taken out of context and you almost are entrapping them to lie Exactly. And, and and so the last year or so, I've been behaving myself, and I've not done that. And that's financially hurt me, too, because I can do those big viral moments to, despite being censored and blackballed and deplatformed. I can yeah. still get the audience to come back. And, and But then I just things are so serious now that I don't even I, I don't even do satire anymore. I don't uh, I, I, I just I decided I said I can't criticize these people and then and then manipulate them. I just I just I just have to be high road no matter what it happens. And so I haven't done that over a year. But every day I go, oh, I could really do something with that. Oh, like Bill O'Reilly loves, he's such a bully. He's such a thug. And he, you know, he he was screaming at this JetBlue employee that couldn't help the plane was broken. You know, planes break. Thank God they're not flying off. You know, when you went with them, when they're going, oh, sorry, it's delayed three hours. They're trying to fix it. There's 10 engineers like sweating, trying to fix it. And then if you got to stay in a hotel for the night, the damn plane's broken. You know, in the military, for a helicopter to be up an hour, it's like 100 hours of maintenance. Well, it's the same thing with aircraft. And and he's like, you little worm, I'll kick. You know, he's in the guy's dehumanizing him. Well, that's not the guy that the part broke on the jet blue. And and he's just such a bullying thug. Well, well, what a monster. I could have gone on air today and said, I don't mean this literally, but I, I, I wish Bill O'Reilly would do that to me. I would break his jaw and stomp his ass on the ground. They will cut me saying, I don't mean this literally, and just put that out. Exactly. But I didn't do it. But I just did it. And people will then watch this later and go, Jones didn't do that. And you'll see how they do that. But that's a, a constant. Like, oh, my God, that's super viral. I could take over that. I could I could really. And I'm just like, don't do it. Don't do it. Because don't do it. it's like the Ring of Mordor. You can't put it on and then have it do good. But yeah. like Bill O'Reilly has like, said the most horrible, horrible, horrible stuff about me. 
and lied about me, and he is just such a thug. And I see him, you know, he's a big guy lording over some little guy going, you're a piece of garbage. You're a piece of filth. How dare you not have my airplane to Turks and Caicos That's ready? That's disgusting. As if, the, as if the person at the counter has the jet engine broken or the landing yeah. gear. What I mean, it's just retarded. If you want to go bitch and say JetBlue has horrible service because the plane broke, that's your issue. But maybe if you flew on five JetBlue flights and then three of them broke down, you'd say, that place sucks. I don't know that. It's hypothetical. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is is that it just shows you who he is. Well, that goes to, like, even in right-wing media. I mean, he's he's definitely been kind of buried under a lot of controversy and shit. He's kind of off well, the radar. Well, he deserves but, it. I mean, he's well, gross. Well, yeah, he, he did a lot of crazy shit and fucked up shit. But... You know, there was a time in your career, I remember this, this is when I was a little younger, that the mainstream media, I wouldn't say they embraced you, but they tolerated you because I think you were maybe possibly less of a threat at the time. So you did the rounds, you did The View, you did Piers Morgan, you did CNN a couple of times, you did a lot of shit, right? That was just mainstream media, which is now I don't think any place would book you other than do a hit piece. <laughs> so you've met all these people. You've met all these people that are the pundits and the, the talking heads. So like, what are they like in real life? Are they fucking demons in real life? Or, because I meet them occasionally and I'm like, oh, these are bad people. You almost have to be a bad person to seek to be that person on CNN, the talking and, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I think, I don't think back in Larry King's heyday or Crossfire with Pat Buchanan and, and people, it was bad. But in the last decade, it's definitely been real reptilian. I don't mean literal reptilians, but it's very sociopathic, very fake. Very, here's your talking point, follow this. And so there's a real emptiness to that. And, and and that's exactly who those people are. I mean, they are empty. Yeah. And they're all just trying to see who can BS the public better so the executives promote them. I think that, um, and you can tell me how you feel about this, but I think that I'm done with Trump. I think his time is gone. I think we're, we need new blood, new energy. I want DeSantis. But the thing about Trump that I will say is I think the best thing about his presidency, because I think he did a lot of things, fucking things wrong, but the best thing is he walked away with a very deserved contempt for the corporate press that he kind of gifted to us. Like, here is the breaking down of the walls. You can see who they really oh, are. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think Trump did thousands of good things. Yeah. Um, it's just his pushing of the experimental injections, his, his, some of the pardons he did were really terrible, him allowing censorship to happen and only paying lip service are, are the negatives. But when it comes to saying, hey, the corporate press is the enemy of the people and calling them out was just beautiful. And I think when he was doing that, he did the best of anybody. And so I think we owe Trump a debt of gratitude. I mean, he went from being worth like $12 billion, like $3 billion while he was president. He got sued thousands of times. He got massively persecuted. Uh, and so when I criticize Trump, it's just so I can point out the things he did that I don't agree with. But overall, I give the guy, you know, I've, I mean, an A plus. Uh, and, 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 you know, I agree that, you know, at 75, 76, whatever it is, he's like Biden. You know, his time has come and gone. I think DeSantis is amazing. I really like DeSantis. I wish I, I like Tulsi Gabbards would be a great president. Uh, we see really? real. Yeah, I mean, I don't agree with everything, everything she says. But, yeah, I mean, I think compared to uh, for other Democrats, she's the best there is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm just saying I like authentic people. Even if I disagree with some of the things they say or do, at the end of the day, you can tell they're running their own show. And I, and I think, you know, they mean well. And I, and I think DeSantis uh, would be the best president for us uh, in two years. I think he's kind of showing that, you know, in my opinion, traditionally, like I've voted Republican my entire adult life, but I think that Republicans generally, especially politicians, are quite weak. I think they're afraid to counterpunch. I think they let the left run amok. Well, that's it. Republicans on average are like 75 years old and they yeah. are scared of the corporate media. They don't get it's good to be attacked by it. And they've got the platform. So, yeah, they just are a bunch of old lawyers that are not need and just conformists, and, and they're horrible. Well, that was one of Trump's pitfalls was he came from um, the Hollywood scene and, well, New York, but the entertainment industry. And I think that he was, to an extent, enamored with being liked by them, still being in that group, that he didn't push back as hard as he could have. Um, whereas DeSantis, I feel like he pulls no fucking punches. I think that he enacts a lot of policy that a lot of people are like, oh, did he really do that? It's like, well, he no, should right. have DeSantis done that. gets, it's, you want to be attacked by the system. You don't want to be loved by it. He understands that it's, it's like rotten milk. I mean, it's expiration date is over. And that's the thing. Netflix is plunging. Hollywood's dead. 
Nothing can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. So they can try to demonize Alex Jones and shut him down and set the president for everybody else. They can try to do all this stuff. It's not going to work. I mean, they're done. Well, I think, and I had this kind of realization, and tell me if you agree, that I think that because I grew up in California and I had to escape L.A. because of the lockdowns and the COVID and shit, I kind of was under this spell that I thought like, oh, Democrat politicians are the enemy. They're evil. They're the worst. And then I said, well, let me look above that. Let me go past that. Because, yeah, Newsom enacted a lot of crazy shit in California that affected my quality of life, everyone I knew. But you think that, or I kind of realized that the corporate press is actually the puppeteer and the politicians are the puppets. It's really the corporate press that holds these Democratic politicians to enacting things that are immoral, like lockdowns and enforced vaccines. Exactly. And- it's it's the UN and the corporate media and the World Economic Forum and the corporations two years ago, 26 months ago, that demanded lockdowns and demanded this, and the media just got in lockstep. And so instead of just worrying about the Democrats, we've got to look at the Davos group and the Bilderberg group and the powerful corporate interests that are in control. You're absolutely right. Corporate global governance is the threat. Yeah, it's not enough to just look at Newsom or any of these other Dem governors. It's like, that's kind of only seeing 10% of the problem because they're held hostage just as much as anyone else. You, you said that DeSantis is able to, you know, allow himself to act without caring about being hated by the press, but the Democratic governors really care about that. And so they're really held hostage because if Newsom didn't lock down California, he'd be smeared in the press. You know, they wouldn't let him not do that. So you have to look above that. Well, absolutely. These people are puppets. Anybody that tries to be a real leader, whether they be male or female, it doesn't matter. The system is going to undermine them and attack them because the special interests want to control everybody. Yeah, 100%. That's why people have got to value free speech like America always did previously. Whether you agree with it or not, it, it, it really is valuable to do it because that's what holds the establishment in check. Uh, and, and just to see liberals now, they're pro-war, they're pro-torture, yeah. they're pro-censorship, they're pro-surveillance, uh, because they're not really liberals. They're just corporate mouthpieces. And because they don't get censored on social media, that's just a form of counterfeit money. You know, you know because they're given that potential to then be spread and heard, they have basically sold out for just a few pieces of silver. Yeah, and then you think about sort of the reason why so much shit goes unchecked now, not even just with the government, but just so many crazy ideologies that run amok, and you think like 90% of the reason this crazy shit's happening is because people are so fucking terrified to speak out against it. Like, living in California, it's very different here in Texas, and I'm so happy here, but living in California, it's like no one had a voice because they were so terrified of being fired, they're so terrified of losing their livelihood, and it's like, I feel like, so much of the crazy shit. I think of like, I don't know, kids going on puberty blockers and getting surgeries. It's like the average person you talk to, if there's not a camera in front of them, if there's not their employer near them, they're going to say, oh, that's really fucked up. That's really wrong. But if they are, if they think anyone but you's listening, they can't say that. Exactly. It's an orthodoxy. And, and like getting back to that, whenever I was here last week and uh, I think you're going to air some excerpts later, but I was kind of out of it at the, at the end. A lot of people were commenting online. I saw it like, well, wait a minute. He hates people that are trans or whatever, but then he's here being a hypocrite. And no, I've never been a hypocrite. I'm not against any adults with whatever they want to do. I'm a libertarian when it comes to that. I've never changed that view. You've been listening for a long time. You know that. What I don't like is whether it's homosexual, heterosexual, whatever it is, whatever the alphabet soup name is, children need to be left alone and be innocent. And if a dude walked up and started trying to tell my kids at the park, five and six-year-olds about sex you call the police but what what is the school doing it leave people leave people alone and let them do what they want as adults and then let them make their own decisions that's what freedom is all about so i've never been hypocritical and i've never been uh uh, you know a fraud about that i think you're a really nice person really smart neat person i like you a lot think it was your friend so to me it doesn't matter it's individuals and what they want to do in their own lives uh you know call me the same shit it's like so it's, it's funny that you mentioned they're calling you a hypocrite. I thought when you first started that sentence, you were going to say people were calling me that because I saw that about me. It's like, I well, saw, how yeah. could you sit there and and talk with him or hang out with him? Which, first of all, this isn't the first time we've been on camera together. This is like the second or third. But second of all, how are you going to tell me behind a screen how he feels when I've been in a room with him? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Well, I mean, I mean that, but, but that's what's happening is... You were on my show like four or five years ago. I mean, it, 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 I, I said, I thought you're a really smart person. You're my first interview ever. So, so I was, I was lucky you came on my show. You're a really smart, neat person. And so, it's just not real. 
And, and, and so I'm not one way for one audience and one way for another. It's all completely there. I don't hate anybody. I'm not a hypocrite. Uh, and I'm not sitting there putting people down. You're not hurting anybody. You're and not it's more convenient for us to hate each other. Let's just be real. It, it keeps things the way that it is, and it keeps this crazy divide by making it more convenient for me to sit here and think that you're going to have a grudge against me or that you're not going to like me. Yeah, but I don't like just me. not, not, I mean, not dislike you. I like you. Exactly. And I like the crew out here and all these cool people. I mean, it's just stupid. And, and what I'm saying is it shouldn't be a political agenda what people do in their personal lives or their identities or who they are. And there was one thing about humans. We change our environment and we change who we are. And it is a fact that we are controlling our evolution. But the globalists then hijack that great truth and say, that's right. And we're going to control the evolution and we're going to be in the driver's seat. And that, that should not be done. Well, so you mentioned, and we'll talk about how last time we were, we were a little out of it, but I, I want you to go more in depth this time about how I, I asked you how you felt about the kids in the hormone blockers and the surgeries. And you said that it was a, um, I want to do that. Can we take a five second break? Yes. All right. I, I, that water you have was so good. And I stole it. And I'm, I'm going to be good this week. Okay. okay. Uh, we need a little more water. Does that mess you up? <laughs> no, you're right. fine. I can go as long as you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get him, get, get him the tequila. Is that water? Or what is that? I don't want to steal yours. No, no, no. What is it, though? It's, it's, it's tequila. Oh, okay, good. We're good then. <laughs> I'm totally awake. I, my daughter was sick. And I was just out of it. You doing good? Yeah. We're good. I'm going to try to get out of this and see if we can go eat. So. Yeah, we should go out to eat. Um, we should. Let's just send this back to me now. Yeah, you're good. Fuck it. Go ahead, sorry. i have a sip of this. Too. That's yours. I yeah. stole yours. So, Let's start over, but I, and yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, here's the deal. Start your question over. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, you're good. So, one of the things we started to get into last time was I asked you about the kids and the trans shit, and it's interesting because like we agree on that shit. I don't think any child should be having their puberty block surgeries that are irreversible, et cetera. I think that's something that you decide to do as an adult of your own volition and whatever. But you mentioned, um, and I want you to get more into it and tell me a little more because I'm fascinated by it. You said that it was a depopulation scheme. And that, or at least part of it was that. Absolutely. It doesn't mean because somebody feels a way or is a way that they're bad. And it is a, a chemical fact uh, that in a zygote or whatever. In, 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 oh, is he out of frame? I apologize. You're good. You're good. I apologize. Well, we, third time's a charm. Take three. Okay. Should I start over the whole question? All right, but third time's a charm, Alex. Go ahead. Okay, so one of the things we got into last time, and I want you to go more in depth this time, because I thought it was interesting, but we were both going through it last time, is uh, we mentioned the trans kid thing, and we mentioned hormone blockers, surgery, and, and what the larger agenda with that is, because even as a trans person, I can see very clearly that there is a government push to normalize that shit, which when I started my transition it, that was not really a thing there's maybe a few kids in sweden doing it because they're always a little bit ahead but it wasn't such a everyone was just on board with kids having their breasts cut off at 13. being bombarded yeah yeah yeah. now it's now it's in the curriculum now it's a push and and we agree in the sense that i disagree with that but you mentioned that it was part of a depopulation scheme or at least a segment of that one factor of it so what is that sure and, and, and it doesn't mean that that that, that people have, have a proclivity or genetically or for whatever reason are are, are predisposed to something or bad people it means there's an agenda hijacking that to basically because obviously you're super smart and 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 you're successful but but i've had members of the uk parliament on there even liberals where the overall they are targeting autistic boys and they are targeting you know low iq and, and down syndrome and stuff as a way to make sure that they don't have any children, uh, they are basically using that as the cover uh, for sterilization. And, and then also there's a larger issue of all the studies. Um, we have a up lake in East Texas on our ranch, and we wanted to get carp in it to eat the, 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 the plant so it's you know clear water. And, they, and you go to the state of Texas and they give you sterilized carp that have had a chemical put in the water that makes them asexual. And so what we know is atrazine and a lot of other chemicals in utero in the first trimester can can basically uh, change a lot of the sexual traits, uh, either physically or, or, or also where you can see it or 
to a less degree, inside brain development. Uh, and so you do have a lot of boys who in utero are more feminine and express more feminine traits. And so it really is the fact that they are more like a girl than a boy. And that's, that's showing up in mammals. It's showing up in reptiles. It's showing up everywhere with the chemicals. And so that's where you get the famous, I'm not against gay people, but I don't want them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. And, and like literally all over you know the world, different species of frogs that get in these chemicals are no longer attracted to the opposite sex. Uh, whatever it does in the endocrine disruptors is it is it, it causes a bunch of a bunch of things to happen. And so we should be having a larger discussion about why there's this proclivity and why this is happening. Not hate people that have been affected by it. And of course, going back thousands of years ago, there were a certain percentage of the population that was already like that to begin with. So I don't hate any of those people. Uh, what I'm getting at is is that there is a larger scientific body of evidence that shows that this is a cultural thing, but more importantly, it's something happening biological. Yeah, I, I think the, I don't know which is scarier, the cultural part or the biological, because um, like I've felt trans my entire life, probably five was the earliest age I had the feelings, but I also am able to recognize that as I get older, I'm watching five-year-olds being told they're that way, which is the opposite for me, which was I had these feelings and they weren't validated by everyone around me or pushed, it was just it kind of fucking happened. But now you have these five-year-olds that are being told because they like girly things or because they like boyish things as a girl that they must be the opposite sex and it's almost this ideological push. And I, I guess that that would make sense if the theory is that this is a depopulation scheme or at least one aspect of it. But that's fucking scary. Well, I mean, I mean, there, there is no doubt they want to destroy the family and they don't want to have single family dwellings. And they want to not just have GMO. I agree with that. Not just have GMO crops. They want to have GMO people. And you've got all these animal-human hybrids that they never roll out in the public, but they've been producing in all these different medical experiments that don't have rights. They don't have animal rights. They don't have human rights. They're this no man's land. And so they're, you know, they're kind of using the trans agenda to get you used to saying a biological man can compete against women or a biological man can be in prison and two women got pregnant. That's not true. So they're also just using it to basically be illogical and then scape group, uh, scapegoat a group of people that are innocent like yourself and then basically use that for their agenda. Because, I mean, you come off like a woman, you look like a woman, and, and, it, and it seems natural that you're a woman. But then you get some giant former, you know, ex-con armed robber prisoner. Raping women in prison. Who's like, who's like deadlifting 600 pounds. And he's like, some goes, hey, dude, how you doing? Yeah, man, I'll get to you next. He's like, it's ma'am, I'm going to beat your ass. You know, and he's like sitting there. That's that's not a woman. It's different. It's, it, different. It, 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 it's different. And then sitting there letting a thug do that, it's like no one buys it. And and so. It's also an easy divider, right? It's an easy topic that is going to split people in half, like so many other things. You know, I, I think back to like, so my whole life, because I'm 28 now, so I'm not old, but I'm not that young. Um, I have been alive long enough to know now that the corporate media uses certain topics to split people and it's very convenient for them. I've been old, I've been around long enough to know that with global warming, the end of the world's always five years away, right? I remember being told 2012, oh, yeah. 2015, 2020. Everything, all the, all the oceans are going to overtake while Bill Gates and Hillary Clinton and Obama by oceanfront property. Right. And, it, and it's a very easy way to divide people, which only serves the elites because you stop looking towards them and you look towards if your If you neighbor. don't let us cut your resources off, you're all going to die. Yeah. And instead of looking at the actual enemy, suddenly you're looking at your neighbor and you're saying, well, you are not wearing a mask or you are against trans or you're for trans or you are racist and you're not racist. So it's, a, it's very fucking convenient. It's another divide and conquer strategy. Yeah, 100 percent. You're absolutely right. And I mean, that's where it is. And, and it becomes just this football issue of instead... Why are you cutting off our gas pipelines, but Saudi Arabia and China and Mexico and India and 160 other countries are building new coal power plants and new pipelines? We won't be able to do industry here. It'll all move to those countries, which, again, the globalists control. So instead of talking about what color we are or what sexual preference we have, you know, they don't want us talking about those big issues. But it seems so low vibrational, too. Right. Like whenever I hear and I don't want to get too deep with it, but whenever I hear people really going on about race and shit like that, it's like I grew up in a poor neighborhood where no one really saw race because everyone was fucking poor. And when I became an adult and I moved to L.A. and I saw that there's all these 
rules for race and all these conversations about race. And I kind of was like, this is so foreign to me. I've never really saw race. And people get so frustrated when you say that, but I've really never given a fuck. And you're not allowed well, you're to right. not it, care. I mean, it's used for social control. It is the new religion. They don't want you to debate big corporations being above the law. They don't want you to debate real issues. So exactly, it's all these rules, these new orthodoxies that you're supposed to follow to prove you're not a bad person. But it doesn't matter if Apple has some of the worst slave conditions in China because, well, you know, Tim Cook gives money to Black Lives Matter. Yeah, I mean, another good example of that is Disney recently See did. how this microphone always lowers, look. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care, but I'm not obsessed with the microphone. It's do, like, we, do we want to get some I'm not complaining. It? I kind of like it. Look at this, though. Look at that. It just sits <laughs> there. I don't even know. I'm too dumb to know how to run Should it. We, all right, let's get it tightened. This is good on air. It's good Yeah, stuff. we'll keep it in. Sorry. Who cares? Well, that's what I do. I apologize. Thanks, hon. Um, but I was going to say, like, one of the things is, like, Disney. It's like, <laughs> don't go. <laughs> you went a little cross-eyed. I'm not second. complaining. No, it just keeps dropping. The render's good. All right, that's good. That's wonderful. I'm not going to touch it. It's dropping again. I'm not complaining. There we go. Yep. Magic. Start over with Disney. Yeah, Disney. Um, You know, they have the whole war, or they have the whole war going on with Florida and all the... They say it's a don't get, say gay bill. It's a lie. The word gay is not in the bill. Then Florida's going back to war with Disney. But, like, Disney is launching streaming in Saudi Arabia where you get thrown off a building for being gay. And gay men are forced to transition because they think that that's better to be a woman than to be a, a faggot, right? So it's like... Absolutely. No, I mean, yeah. it's, it's all hypocrisy. Disney's just covering itself, like again, like a religion that, oh, we're good. When the bill says don't sexualize children... School teachers, when kids are like, what, five to eight, don't tell them about sex? Leave them alone. Yeah. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. Exactly. Just leave people's innocence alone. You're absolutely right. I don't think you can make someone gay or trans who isn't, but I think you can confuse a kid about if they are or not. You can fuck up a kid's head. Absolutely. And, 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 and then you're going to have a lot of predators who are going to say they're women so that they can get around women. Yeah, of course. And people said that wouldn't happen, but then you're seeing it more and more. It's just fucking crazy. Well, I'm going to bet money when you go in the women's area and nobody's having a problem. No one gives up. No, no yeah, one gives Yeah, but when you get some dude that's like bigger than me, like, hey, I'm in a women's area. And like, I read about where they, like, they'll go to like Asian spas where the grandma and the mother and the kid are in the hot tub. Yeah, that was an And LA. like a, a dude gets in with a heart on. And it's like, what the, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's like. There's this, a difference between you going in with a wig and me going in. It's just different, you know? Yeah, it, it's different. But people don't see that. People don't get that. It's all the fucking same shit to people. Well, but that's what they're doing. And it's just, it's completely insane. Uh, and and they know what they're doing. And it's total divide and conquer, like you said. And it needs to stop. Yeah. Because Can I get back? I don't want to forget this question. Because when, yeah, when, when you were saying it, I was like, I got to get back to this. But then we kept going about the other shit. Um, the human animal hybrids mm -hmm. i don't really know much about that that's that just sounds like some crazy shit not in a bad way it just sounds like mm. nuts w can you just give me the the for dummies version of what's happening there growing human organs is obviously going to be one of the biggest industries ever yeah. and you it's hard to create artificial wombs to do that also if something's 100 percent human it's got rights and if something's an animal, it's even got rights. But if it's a new species, a, a, an alien, which means never been on the earth before, part human, part animal, now that human-animal hybrid doesn't have rights. And so you can gestate it, in usually in a cow, but they grow an, other animal-human hybrids, um, pig-human hybrids, you name it, inside cows. Those cows are generally uh, being given anti-rejection drugs or themselves are part human. Uh so that they can then not reject um, the humanoid they're growing up inside of it. Oh and I remember 25 years ago seeing like MIT reports on it. Uh, and, and then and even five years ago, they had articles, uh, human animal hybrids are gestating or in utero on farms across the U S that's a real headline. And it just admits there's thousands of these clones. And I've talked to some people that have worked uh, in uh biomedical areas that have been involved in it, including University of Texas. And uh, one time uh, I was actually uh, given a little little tour, and I, I, I was off records. I can't get into all of it, but I was able to see some of these. Oh, my God. Um, I, over CCTV at, at a facility out in Bastrop from UT uh, downtown. I was able to look at it. Um, it was Holy. a DARPA, DARPA program. And that, was, uh, that was about 23 years ago. And these were human-animal apes. 
um, that they're using for medical experiments. And they, they admit that's going on. It's in the National Academy of Sciences and in the NIH and all that that's going on. And, and so, but here's the deal. I'm talking about it. It's like I'm talking about Mars because it sounds crazy. But you know, I don't think it actually sounds that fucking crazy. Mm. I, I think it, it sounds so, it sounds out of what we think would be acceptable, but then you look throughout history. Well, that's it. It's all segregated yes. away where you don't see it. Yeah. You think of so many experiments throughout history. You think of so many um, surgeries that we have now that we deem as important in a routine that were born out of the Nazi experiments. And you think of, you know, so much crazy shit that goes on. It's not actually that unbelievable. It's wild, but it's not that unbelievable. Exactly. And what's frustrating to me is, 99% of what I cover is open source and not debatable. And then they'll just lie and say I'm making it up. But, I mean, that's really going on. I mean, in the last week, they had the Washington Post, the New York Times, Bloomberg, the Financial Times of London all say it's time to have dictators. Freedom isn't good. It's time to censor. It's time to be in a tyranny. These are headlines saying this, that it's time to have a dictator. This is what the Davos group and the globalists are selling. Yeah. I just have another question about the animal hybrids. Um, what level of, this is almost my morbid curiosity, I'm going to a dark place right now. What level of consciousness did they have that they are an experiment? Did they have like animal intelligence? Did they have human intelligence somewhere in between? Do you even know? How much can you say? Well, if you know how mad scientists work, and if you look at the spirit of evil that runs thing, it's mad scientists, the sky's the limit. There are thousands of admitted projects in the U.S. that have happened, thousands in China, uh, ones I've seen in, like, financial reports out of Costa Rica, South Korea, just everywhere. So, and don't forget your thought, but but I've seen a lot of, like, studies about, like, when the government would operate on, like, mentally retarded children. Oh, absolutely. And, You've had so, all the yeah. secret medical experiments in Tuskegee, but, I mean, you were asking how far along it is. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know that 20... Three years ago or so, I saw a CBS News article about a military base in, in, in upstate New York that had spider goats on it. So I was my own producer then. So spider I Spider goats? Spider goats. Okay. So I, I called the name of the guy on the thing. He answers. He goes, yeah, I'll come on your show. Yeah, I got a Defense Department contract. I'm a genetic engineer. We create body armor out of the milk of these goats that are you know part spider. And all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. He got in a bunch of trouble for talking to me, but he'd been in CBS News. I have had people, after that happened, walk to me on the street and go, you're a liar. We can't splice goats and spiders. Well, since then, there's thousands of articles admitting spider goats. Anybody can type in spider goats. You'll get articles going back you know, 20 years. The point is, is that they kind of report it to see what we do and then kind of pull back. And so that's my point is, if... 20-something years ago, they had spiders, sp goats that were part spiders, whose udders were basically spider spinnerets because the rest of the goat looks like a goat, but the udders are like a spider spinneret deal. Holy fuck. I, look it up, guys. I, I'm not making this up. It's not even debatable. That's 20-something years ago. So, wow. And I interviewed the head of the project. Uh, you, you, you know, it, it's just insane. Like, I had the head of Harp on like 25 years ago. Because back then I wasn't a big show, so I could just call and get people on. Like, oh, yeah, come on, tell us about Harp. He's the top scientist. He comes on. There's an Air Force colonel on the line. In case anything's classified, they kill the interview in 20 minutes and cut the guy off. He's like, well, yeah, Harp can't ignite the atmosphere. We can't control the weather. And, and, like, that's a real interview with the real head of Harp. That really happened. So, so much of what I've done has just been really open source. Well, you know, of all the shit that you talk about, I think that the spider or not the spider, the animal human hybrids are actually probably one of the more believable things that you talk about. I, I think like that's kind of common sense. It's one of those things people almost wonder, like it's one of those questions you ask as like a five year old, like, can a dog and a cat have a baby? It's like a very kind of juvenile. Th of course, there are scientists that fucking fuck with that and try to make it happen. Well, exactly. They're called chimeras. It, yeah. it goes back to the Greeks because they, you know, they mythically said there were these, you know, Part man, part horse, part whatever, mermaids. Whether, whether that ever existed or not, it does now. Mermaids exist now. Oh, they've definitely tried to splice humans with with fish. Um, I mean, they've done it all at the embryonic level. It, it's not debatable. Type in humans splice with fish in in in, in genetic cloning tests, and it, it, there's articles. Humans splice with insects. Did you know, as of last year, 2021, there's already GMO salmon that's part insect and part mammal 
that's twice as big as regular salmon being sold on store shelves without telling you. Wow. I mean, we genetically modified 90% of our fucking food. Why wouldn't we? It makes sense to me. Extraterrestrials, though. Sounds like a basic bitch question, but Area 51, what do you know? What do you not know? I think Area 51 is a skunk works, black ops, um, secret aircraft facility, space plane facility. And they've also stored a lot of toxic waste there. That's what I would assume. So is it is it more of a convenient kind of government narrative almost that they have alien shit there? Or is that real? You know, I know people that have worked there. They didn't tell me all the details, but it's come out in congressional hearings uh, that it, it's basically a giant toxic waste dump. And then they've got some of the older generation spy planes there. Uh, but they've got facilities in other parts of the country that nobody knows the names of uh, that have a really advanced uh, spacecraft and things. Spacecraft from us? Us, or? yeah. Okay. I mean, because you don't want to just Elon Musk, big heavy lifter into orbit. Uh, they have these space planes that are very elegant. Uh, that uh, take off from the ground, go into space, and then come back down. And then they've, they've got uh, mainly meteor gun payloads on them. They don't really carry hydrogen bombs uh, because that has atmospheric issues. But a meteor gun into a gravity well is what you want. It's a uh, usually about a 100-pound Sabo of depleted uranium with a rocket-guided system on the back that by the time it comes into the atmosphere, it's burned off, but it's very precision. So you can kill somebody a mile and a half under a mountain with a hundred pound DU Sabo. And so it's a, it's a planetary decapitation weapon system where in a couple hours, uh, the people that run our country um, could uh, kill all the leaders of the world, no matter where they're at with, with bunker busting DU Sabo meteor guns. Well, that's pretty fucking terrifying. And that accidentally was declassified. I interviewed the former head of the Star Wars program. And well, what's Dr. B B uh, What's his name? But it, the, the, the point was is that uh, they had accidentally declassified some of that. That's why we we're able to know about it. What's the T on actual extraterrestrials, though? Do you have strong opinions on that or no? Uh, I mean, we are creating animal-human hybrids that aren't of this world, so they're aliens. So aliens are amongst us. We're creating nanotech that's digitally created by a computer that was never existed before. Uh, it's like that cheesy 1990s movie, Species, where... The aliens send to the radio telescope a code of a DNA sequence. And then the humans put it together here, but it's an alien. So did it land in a flying saucer or is it, was, was it made by scientists? And the answer is there are thousands and thousands of known aliens and new life forms that didn't even come from plant or animal life that's literally digitally made that replicates and that, and that you know, uh, they're trying to give an intelligence that, that is taking place. And, and generally, the whole flying saucer UFO thing, I think, is a distraction. Clearly, though, we're stacked interdimensionally on top of each other, and there is uh, cultural themes of interdimensional entities that are communicating with us that, that, that we could definitely list as alien. Yeah, I, I would actually agree that UFOs are a distraction only because the government, it was mostly like in 2020, part of 2021, where the government was suddenly being very open about UFOs that they in a way they never were before and and talking about it and declassifying things and I thought okay well that kind of actually ruins the idea that it's real aliens because I don't think the government would actually tell us so what was the what was the purpose for that like what was the reason why they were suddenly being so open about UFOs you've got the deep state the permanent state just toying with people and getting them ready for more advanced technologies that have been rolled out where they want to do an Operation Blue Beam is what it's called, to pose as aliens, to try to unify the Earth or get us to go along with what they want. You know, they'll use viruses to unify us and take control of us. They'll use the threat of alien invasion uh, to do it. But when you see these videos of a drone pulling up over an aircraft carrier and then zooming back off, clearly that's that's most of that's human technology that they're just attributing to aliens. Did you see COVID coming? Like, a, a, or more specifically? not just the idea of a virus or a pandemic, because I think anyone can kind of say like, yeah, every hundred years we kind of have a thing, but the government's reaction to it and then the people's willingness to lock down, do forced vaccines, masks, all that, because that's, that is unprecedented. I had a conversation with Joey's grandma, who's in her 90s, and she worked for the CIA for many years. And I asked her, I was like, have you ever seen anything like this? Because, you know, she's in her 90s. She's seen a lot more than I will. And um, she said, no, this is completely unprecedented. So did you see it coming? I mean, I did. You know, there's a lot of viral clips out there 
of us 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago, three years ago before it happened, saying uh, they're going to lock things down. They're going to make us wear masks. They're going to track everywhere we go. They're going to use us to bring in a global digital currency and a social credit score uh, and using the vaccine passport to track and control and introduce the idea of these climate lockdowns. And that's because it's all in the Operation Lockstep. So the goal is climate lockdowns. Total control, yes. Feudalism. Uh, Operation Lockstep 2011 Rockefeller Foundation. And then there's the SPARS report. Uh, there's Event 201 report. There's the Crimson Contagion, where these governments and corporations do these drills that were basically the model of what they did two years ago. Well, I mean, I'll tell you, I never would have guessed that people would be so willing to lock down because of a pandemic. I mean, so the idea of climate lockdowns, it's like maybe before that, I've been like, no, that's completely ridiculous. But now I'm like, well, actually, I think that if the government and CNN and all these corporate press outlets run enough fear, I think people would lock down because of climate. I think it's entirely possible. And now they say they want the climate lockdowns. And then you weren't supposed to question alternative treatments that were being suppressed. You weren't supposed to question how lockdowns would cause mass starvation. You weren't. It was all a big exercise in censorship, too, to see if they could get away with a global pandemic that will really will depopulate people. So what we just saw was a real virus cooked up in a lab released and, and the so-called gene therapy vaccine. But what they're planning next, all the evidence points towards is something much more devastating, much more serious. Right. Do you think that it's actually over, or do you think that when it's politically convenient, they'll bring all that shit back? Not oh, the actual virus, when it's, the... it's politically... Exactly. When the political opposition mounted all over the world, they backed off. But in China and places where they had control, it gets, it gets even more intense. Oh, yeah, it's back there. The crazy videos of them killing the dogs and... Cats yeah. and, and the people locked up by the 400 million of them. This is all an exercise in martial law. And it's economic war, because you can't get the Chinese to stop working... But if you just lock them all in their houses and their major industrial cities, that's going to hurt the West. Have you seen the video of um, it's like a skyline view of the city and all these apartment buildings in China and people just screaming in their apartments? And it's real. Yeah. It, but what do you think, mm -hmm. just based on everything that's happened and what you may be able to predict, do you think Americans will tolerate that again? Or do you think that Americans will say, I actually went through that, fuck that? What do you think? Thomas Jefferson was once asked... What is the liberal, Thomas Jefferson was once asked, what is the level of tyranny that people will live under? And he said, the level you accept. Because even if you have a bad tyrant, but they're not that bad, they're going to die. They're going to get replaced by somebody worse. So if people don't stand up to tyranny, there's always going to be something worse. And it just creates an acceleration until you've just got a nightmare scenario. Well, it's also like, you know, people talk about how every generation has a new fight. And I feel like that's this generation's too. Like, it, there's always a new threat to people's quality of life, people's freedom. Blair, that's a great point. We think of the big threat as Hitler 80 years ago, or we think of it as 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 Lenin or Stalin or Mao. You never look at now. Never look at now. And now it's not tanks and airplanes. It's inflation, and it's lockdowns, and it's surveillance robots and drones, and it's replacing humans with AI. And it, that's the new threat, and people better— Wake up. They better start valuing human life again. And banding together is like a human union, not even for better pay or whatever at work, but a human union calling for dignity and, and taking care of each other and, and you know, actually building a future. And that's what the, that's what the globalists pose as liberals is because that's what threatens them is real liberalism, real renaissance, really coming together, really being loving, really building a real social safety net. That means we don't let people be lazy, but we also help poor people and we empower people. And we have healthy competition, not this right. divide and conquer thing we have now. I'm pretty pessimistic by nature usually, but lately I actually feel like, and we may agree or disagree about what the actual fight is and the overarching, mm -hmm. like what we're trying to achieve, but I think things are actually looking quite up. I'm, I'm pretty white-pilled lately. I'm pretty like, actually, I think people are getting sick of having their lives restricted. I think people are starting to look above the paradigm of left and right. Not everyone, but I think that it's not about a numbers game. I think if a sizable amount of people are fighting against globalists and fighting against the corporate press, then we don't need over half. I think we just need a good like quarter. Blair, I totally agree with that. Uh, what you said is 100% true. And I mean, I can't say it any better. Humanity has a hunger for freedom, a hunger for coming together, a hunger for real diversity and freedom. 
uh, and it's not going to be stopped. And the whole power structure is losing control. It's collapsing. And all of these cult-like programs and social distancing and inoculations and masks and all of this is a desperate sign of them trying to scare us into submission uh, into being under their control again, and it's just not going to work. So you're hopeful then? You're feeling good I, about it? I think I am white-pilled. You know, it's going to be yeah. hard for those of us under the tip of the spear who are up front because we're going to get attacked. We're going to, you know, be made an example of. But if we just step into that office and realize that's our job, at the end of the day, things are going to be a lot better. If we do the right thing, then it's it, it's a good thing. How do you want to be remembered? I mean, I want to be remembered as somebody that challenged the status quo and somebody that legitimately tried to empower humanity and somebody that wasn't scared to call it like I saw it, uh, you know, to call it like you see it, and that sometimes I'm wrong, but most of the time I'm right, and that I'm just a real populist and I'm pro-human and I really believe in our species, and I don't get mad when I see somebody else being successful because that is a collective victory of all humans, and I just really want to be remembered as the guy that helps everybody override this eugenics, depopulation, AI, post-human world uh, of the transhumanist and that we actually have the real empowerment of humans to go to the next level. I kind of see you as like the godfather of like a lot of these political commentators that are out now. I feel like you started kind of like the idea of taking to the internet, speaking your fucking mind. And now it's almost like you have a bunch of like kids around, like at least commentators that are doing your thing now and and they're still on social media maybe they will or won't get banned but i think that you know whatever people have to say about you i think that you started a movement that a lot of people are taking the best from maybe not the worst from and they're they're continuing your fight do you feel like that do you do you see other people well i'm honored you say that and, and i mean i do think that i was part of the wave before this current huge wave of the vanguard of people questioning but there were a lot of folks before me but yes I was able to use any outlet I could to warn people, and so I'm seen as a trailblazer because of that. But they say that necessity is a mother of invention, uh, and yeah, I mean, I mean, I've definitely been decoding the deep state, the permanent state, the globalist agenda, and so regardless of whether I'm right all the time or wrong, part of the time, that's not debatable. It's true. It doesn't matter. Overall, I'm pointing out the power structure and the fact that it is out of control. And the fact that it has unlimited money, unlimited resources, and is using behavioral psychology to dominate and dumb people down. But it itself is completely inept. And it in itself is losing. And so the more it doubles down to control us, the more it loses its grip, the more it doubles down. And that really endangers humanity because they've got a lot of powerful technology and weapons. And they need to just turn loose and realize that they have failed and that they are their own worst enemy, and just let humanity come back together, create a real consensus of what's best for our species through free will, and move forward with that. You know, I, I think that, we'll wrap this up now, but I think that just the fact that the regime goes as hard as they do against you kind of speaks for itself. Because if you were just out here spouting a bunch of bullshit, and you weren't right about at least a significant amount of the things that you talk about, I don't think they would try to ruin your life as hard as they are. That's my personal opinion. And people can be upset that we're sitting across from each other. People can be upset that we're friends. People, they'll always find something to be mad about. But I think you're a good person. I think you've made mistakes like every other fucking person. And I think that you are regretful for the things that you are, you know, regretful for. And I think you're going to be okay. Well, I think you're right. And I, and I appreciate your kind words. I think you're a great person as well. And your crew is amazing. Congratulations on your new show. I think it's going to be a huge hit because I'll definitely watch. You're really a smart, uh, insightful person. And... I do want to be better. I mean, I've kind of didn't know how powerful I was 10 years ago when I was doing a lot of this stuff, and I would just kind of ham-fistedly just go off, you know, on tangents and even be satirical, and people took that serious. But, you know, that's all part of the process, and uh, so I really do hope to be able to stay on air and, and, and have my best work now be, you know, basically presented to the public. And I'm very thankful for shows like yours that have the courage to have me on because when you're censored and deplatformed, I have my own audience at Infowars.com. I have my own, you know, video streaming system at Bandai Video. I have a weekday show. I have some other great talk shows like Owen Schroyer and others. And I, and I hope you'll come on my show soon. But that's my core audience of great patriots. I have them. But outside of that, the media can say anything it wants about me. And I don't have a way 
to respond to things that aren't true. And so it, it, it's it's basically like being in prison, and it's very frustrating. So people think, oh, censored means you can't say what you want. No, censored means you cannot defend yourself. Yeah. And then they steal your identity and build this straw person that isn't you. And so thank you for letting me out of my dungeon, of uh, out of my cage. And, uh, you know, I, I just care about everybody out there. And I just hope everybody will research what I've said and find out for yourself that I'm not lying to you, and at least not on purpose. Well, that's the thing. People should be able to make up their own mind about what you're saying, right? And if you're unable to just speak to people and defend yourself, like you said, but also speak your your thoughts and your opinions and your ideas out loud, then not only is there a Streisand effect that people will listen more, which is not apparently what they don't want, right? But like people should be able to listen to what you say and say, no, that's fucking crazy or oh, that's right or that's maybe right. You know, like you should. I don't think you should be banned. And I think Elon Musk should unban you when he owns Twitter. Well, oh, I hope year. he does that. I mean, I like Elon. He's doing more and more good things. So there's like a balance. Like he has his neural link. I don't like that. And he's got What's that? his, his, his univer brain chips, oh. his universal oh. basic income. Don't like that. But then he's exposing the fact that you better watch out these vaccines and uh, he's against censorship and he's for the family and he, he loves humanity. So I think in the weighing Elon Musk, I think he's a really good guy and I hope he does take Twitter over uh, and I hope he does stand up against these, the, 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 these corporate fascists because you know what they're doing with their censorship and their destruction of open debate is, is absolutely criminal and yeah. uh, needs to be stopped. So I think uh, he's on a journey. I think you're on a journey. I think I'm on a journey, and it is what it is. Absolutely, and it's just exciting to see Joe Rogan more popular than ever. Yeah, because he's more hardcore, and to see all these other great, you know, podcasters and talk show hosts, and to see even small podcasts. I mean, CNN Plus has ten thousand viewers a day. Yeah, it's a flop. And they spent three hundred million on it. Netflix is imploding because people want authentic. They don't want fake and. You're real. I'm real. This is all real, folks. This is unscripted, and this is what they don't want you to have access to. You got to ask yourself: Are we the threat, or the people that don't want you to be able to think for yourself a threat? I think you know the answer. One hundred percent. Thanks for coming on, Alex. Thank good. you so much. It was really great. Part one and part two. We're going to combine them. It's great. Now you're about to see me passing out on air. We'll put a clip in right now. <laughs>